so much years of taking out of the media go under or over the Interstate 275 serves as one of the most important regional transportation corridors in the Tampa Bay area. Its 59 miles of pavement and bridges link drivers through four counties and the downtown areas of both Tampa and St. Petersburg. On the average day, over 700,000 trips are served along I-275. One of well, the more critical segments is the three-mile bridge crossing, called the Howard Franklin Bridge. The north and southbound bridges allow over 140,000 vehicles per day to travel between Pinellas and Hillsborough County. Looking ahead, as the original and older northbound bridge nears the end of its serviceable life, it's important to consider how this corridor can continue to serve this region into the future. The Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT, welcomes you to the public hearing for the Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, study for the replacement of the northbound I-275 Howard Franklin Bridge. This hearing is being conducted in association with the Federal Highway Administration and in coordination with the Tampa Bay Area Regional Transportation Authority and the Metropolitan Planning Organizations and Transit Agencies in Hillsborough and Pinellas Counties. This public gathering also serves to convey information and seek input so local leaders can make informed decisions about future transportation accommodations. These include potential express lanes along I-275 and premium transit service between the Gateway area in Pinellas County and the West Shore area in Hillsborough County. This public hearing is being conducted in accordance with all federal, state, and local requirements. Draft study reports are available for review at this hearing and have been on public display at two local libraries and the FDOT District 7 office. The display period began on September 17th and will continue until October 21st, 2013. The project newsletter shows the library hours. The PD&E study process includes a comprehensive evaluation of the proposed improvements shown in the engineering concepts. Those concepts are evaluated for economic impacts, as well as effects on the sociocultural and natural environments in the area. The need for replacement of the northbound bridge is based on several factors. The bridge structure is nearing its service life. The width of the left shoulder is below current standards. The elevation is too low, making it vulnerable to wave damage during major storm events. Replacement is more cost-effective than continuing to perform structural repairs. The bridge is a vital link in the local and regional transportation network. The currently adopted 2035 long-range transportation plans for both Pinellas and Hillsborough County Metropolitan Planning Organizations both document the need to replace the northbound Howard Franklin Bridge. Over the last two years, FDOT has been preparing detailed engineering and environmental evaluations and coordinating with stakeholders to identify a recommended bridge replacement alternative for the PD&E study. The purpose of this public hearing is to present the recommended bridge replacement build alternative and receive your comments for the official study record. To help us determine the best replacement option, we first had to examine what was already there. The Howard Franklin bridges are three miles long and were constructed in the center of an 800-foot-wide right-of-way corridor. Both bridges carry three travel lanes and one auxiliary lane. There is also an existing access road on both sides of the causeway for emergency turnarounds. 
During the study, anticipated growth and future transportation needs were analyzed. This evaluation led to the development of the recommended alternative being shown this evening. The recommended alternative includes building a new northbound bridge between the existing southbound bridge and the existing northbound bridge and removing the older northbound structure. Similar to the existing bridge, the new bridge will carry three general lanes and one auxiliary lane, but will include design features that will allow the structure to be widened in the future. The recommended alternative will also preserve sufficient right-of-way to accommodate an envelope for future premium transit service across the bay that will be discussed later. The cost for the recommended alternative is approximately $390 million. In addition to the increased design flexibility, the new northbound bridge will be built approximately eight feet higher than the existing structure. The navigational channel height will remain the same at nearly 49 feet. This increased elevation will reduce or eliminate substantial wave damage during major storm events. There are advantages and disadvantages associated with the recommended build alternative versus the no build alternative. The no-build or do-nothing alternative is considered a viable alternative and will remain so for the duration of the study. A more detailed comparison is on display at this hearing. In addition to this PD&E study, District 7 is developing a master plan to evaluate express lanes along portions of I-275, I-4, and I-75. The plan will identify short-term, low-cost improvements as well as long-term express lane concepts. Similar to the I-95 express lanes in South Florida, the proposed express lanes would be told to help offset construction costs and provide reliable travel times for users. Implementing express lanes across the Howard Franklin Bridge is possible in the future if the new bridge is built such that it can be widened. If the new bridge were built wide enough to carry two express lanes in each direction at the onset, the cost to replace the northbound bridge and provide over six miles of these express lanes in each direction is approximately $710 million. As part of the express lane evaluation, FDOT will determine how many express lanes could be needed along I-275 and the Howard Franklin Bridge in the future. The addition of express lanes to the bridge could be implemented as part of a phased approach. Initially, the auxiliary lane on each structure could be converted to an express lane. This is an easily implemented low-cost improvement. As congestion increases in the future, additional express lanes may be needed. In the long term, the northbound bridge could be widened to carry two express lanes in each direction. While looking at the replacement of the northbound bridge, the FDOT has also been working with local agencies to consider how to accommodate future premium transit within the 800-foot right-of-way. This transit evaluation includes three components the bridge crossing over the bay and the connection to proposed stations in Pinellas and Hillsborough counties. There are a number of options to consider when local transit agencies evaluate premium transit service. In Pinellas County, a premium transit study called the Pinellas Alternatives Analysis or AA, defined potential transit modes, service line, and approximate station locations. The Pinellas AA considered light rail, premium bus, or expanding the existing express bus service. If express lanes are constructed, the premium transit buses can use the express lanes. The locally preferred alternative for the Pinellas AA identified a proposed transit station in the Gateway area of Pinellas County. 
There are two basic ways of reaching this station from the Bay Crossing. Option A, across Alberton through Carillon. Or option B, continuing down I-275 to Roosevelt. In Hillsborough County, a joint effort between the City of Tampa, the County, Tampa International Airport, and FDOT is underway to identify possible locations for a multimodal center in the West Shore area. That ongoing study has identified several viable sites. When the local agencies determine the preferred site, the regional transit connection will be refined. There are three basic options to reach this future West Shore station. Option A follows the Kennedy exit to West Shore Boulevard. When the SR60 interchange is reconstructed, Option B would travel north along a newly opened Rio connection and continue along Cypress. Option C would continue along I-275 and bring premium transit in the median between West Shore and downtown Tampa. However, the median will not be wide enough to accept an exclusive guideway or future express lanes until the ultimate SR-60 interchange is built. Looking at a separate transit bridge for the Bay Crossing, as well as connection to the Gateway and West Shore stations, the premium transit line would be more than 12 miles long. The cost to replace the northbound bridge, combined with a new transit bridge built on either the west or east side of the traffic bridges and rail station connections, is nearly $1.4 billion. The study team evaluated whether the new bridge could be built now and widened later to carry future rail and an express lane in each direction on an integrated structure. These future widening options are named 31R13 and 41R14, depending on how many non-express lanes are provided in each direction, three or four. The overall cost for these options including the recommended bridge replacement with enhancements for future rail, the future bridge widening, and rail connections between Gateway and West Shore, ranges from over $1.45 to $1.57 billion. For either of these options to be feasible, the exact rail technology would need to be decided to design and build the bridge initially for the appropriate future loadings and widening scenarios. Several key decisions related to future options for express lanes or transit are needed by leaders on both sides of the bay. They include selecting a future transit mode, such as bus or rail, the type of service, as well as confirming the station locations and connection routes. In addition, confirming the network feasibility for regional express lanes and evaluating the influences beyond this project is also needed. The FDOT will be embarking on a public information campaign and hosting future meetings about the overall Tampa Bay express lane evaluation. Regardless of the future considerations, the replacement of the northbound bridge is necessary. A detailed evaluation of the impacts and costs for the recommended replacement alternative are shown on an evaluation matrix at this hearing. As mentioned earlier, the overall cost for design and construction of the recommended bridge replacement alternative is approximately $390 million without future premium transit or express lanes. Today's public hearing is an opportunity for you to ask questions and offer comment on this project, both the replacement of the northbound bridge and future transportation options. Project representatives are available to provide more detailed information and address your questions. There are several ways to make a comment as part of the public hearing record. All comments received regardless of how they are submitted, will be reviewed and considered in the study analysis. You can speak directly with the court reporter at this hearing. 
you may complete the comment form provided in your brochure and drop it in one of the comment boxes today. Or, you may mail written comments to the address listed on the back of the form. Please return this form postmarked by October 21st, 2013, so your comments can become part of the PD&E study public hearing record. For your convenience and for future information, the FDOT created a public website for this project. You can go to www.mytbi.com, then click on Future Projects, and then I-275 Howard Franklin Study for additional project information. Materials from this public hearing and other project information will be posted. Following the hearing, the project team will review all public input. They will document the preferred alternative, finalize the study documents, and complete the PD&E study. In the next few months, the final documents will be submitted to the Federal Highway Administration for review and acceptance so the project can move forward to the next phase. The Department thanks you for your participation at this public hearing and for your interest in this important regional transportation project. I'm Chris Carson, the DOT spokesperson in the Public Information Office. And tonight we're here in a public hearing presenting a proposed option to replace the northbound or what is commonly referred to the eastbound span on Howard Franklin Bridge. We're here to get public comment. We're also presenting some transit options that we're looking at. They, everything ranges from managed lanes, or what was commonly referred to as express lanes. We're looking at some light rail, bus rapid transit. We're looking at all different types of technologies. And we're going to work with those whole Hillsborough and Pinellas counties to figure out what technologies are best for the right for the Bay Area. As you can see here, this is just one of our maps that we're showing the public. Good evening. Welcome to the public hearing for the, for, uh, for the Howard Franklin Northbound Bridge Replacement Project Development and Environment Study, or PD&E Study. My name is Kurt Logan, and I am the Environmental Management Engineer for District 7 of the Florida Department of Transportation. Today is Tuesday, October the 8th, 2013, and it's approximately 6 p.m. We're assembled at the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority's office located in St. Petersburg, Florida. This public hearing is being held relative to work program item segment number 422-799-1. This project is the combination of two complementary studies. The first is the Howard Franklin Northbound Bridge Replacement PDE study and is the reason we are here this evening. The second is the Regional Transit Corridor Evaluation. We are conducting the hearing this evening to provide you an opportunity to discuss the project and to submit formal comments on the PDE study portion. If you would like to provide input on the transit corridor evaluation, you may do so using the available comment form or by visiting the project website. This public hearing is being held in accordance with the applicable state and federal laws and public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. This hearing was advertised consistent with federal and state requirements and is being conducted in accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. This information is provided in the project brochure. This public hearing is being conducted in two sessions. Both sessions will be combined into a single public hearing record for the PDE study. The first section session is tonight, the eighth day of October 2013, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Vanilla Suncoast Transit Authority offices located at 3201 Shearer Drive, St. Petersburg, Florida. The second session will be held Thursday, October the 10th, 2013, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m at the Tampa Marriott West Shore, located at 1001 North West Shore Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. This is your opportunity to receive information on the Howard Franklin Northbound Bridge Replacement pd &E Study and officially comment on the recommended build alternative and other documents available here tonight. 
The recommended bill alternative is based on comprehensive environmental and engineering analysis completed to date, as well as on, on public as well as on public comments that have been received throughout the duration of the study. This study meets the, the maximum air quality standards established by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. When you arrive this evening, you should have received an informational newsletter with, and a comment form. If you weren't able to sign in or did not receive an information packet, please stop by our sign-in table before leaving this evening. You should have also had the opportunity to view the video presentation that is continuously running throughout this public hearing. On projects such as this one, one of the unavoidable consequences is the necessary acquisition of properties and the relocation of families and businesses. On this project, however, we anticipate no property acquisitions and no relocations. Before I continue, I would like to recognize any elected officials or their representatives who are here tonight. I ask that you please stand and introduce yourself for the record. Bill Johnson, Clearwater City Council. Doreen DiPolito, Clearwater City Council. Jeff Tanner, St. Petersburg City Council. Thank you. Anyone desiring to make a statement or present written views and or exhibits regarding the location, conceptual design, social, economic, or environmental effects of the Howard Franklin Northbound Bridge Replacement will now have an opportunity to do so. You may also make a statement at the public hearing second session scheduled for Thursday, October the 10th, 2013 in Tampa. If you have completed a speaker's card, please give them to a department staff member. If you have not received a speaker card and wish to speak, please raise your hand so we can get you a card to complete. statements and exhibits may be presented in lieu of or in addition to verbal comments. All written statements received at either section of this public hearing and at the Florida Department of Transportation District Office located at 11201 uh, North McKinley Drive, Tampa, Florida, 33612, postmarked no later than October 21st, 2013, will become a part of the PDE Studies public record. At this time, I will call upon those who have turned in speaker cards. When you come forward, please state your name and address clearly into the microphone for the record. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public agency, please provide that information as well. Please limit your comments uh, to the bridge replacement PDE study and keep them to three minutes in order to allow everyone an opportunity to speak. If you have additional comments related to the BDNE study, you may continue with the court reporter after the formal session. Our first speaker is Andy Bell. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to stand and address everyone this evening. Very quick comment. Could I get you to state your name and your address? Please? Sure. Reverend Andy Bell, 500 Lewis Boulevard, Southeast, Central New York, Florida. I am thrilled with the opportunity that we are looking at in the expansion of the Howard Franklin Bridge. Not only for the engineering that needs to be done, but for the future possibilities, and I want to urge that all officials related to this program will seriously consider the need for light rail transit. Uh, I have lived in cities that have had light rail. I have traveled to cities across this country and in Europe that have wonderful light rail, and we are so far behind the times. Looking at the benefits for 
those of us over on the coast, when we consider people who visit in the Orlando region, going to the uh, big parks over there, isn't it going to be wonderful when they're able to get on a train and go to the beach without having to stop, without having to rent cars, when they can go to the beach and stay for several days at some of our hotels and motels? Not to mention those of us who live on this side who would desperately love to be able to transfer to other parts of the state to go to meetings and attend venues and be able to do it without having to drive a vehicle. Please consider the need for light rail to take the transit of this region into the 21st century and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ann Drake McMullen. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, my name is Ann Drake McMullen. Address is 333 Third Avenue North in St. Petersburg. Um, I guess my big question that I would like FDOT to consider is: Are you aware that at this time PSTA and the County Commission are considering a ballot initiative um, in 2014, November 2014, um, to include additional options for? Uh, rapid transit, whatever that might be. So we would ask that you consider that as you're looking at these alternatives and not propose an alternative that would not include the option of rail or bus rapid transit in the initial process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Frank Jackalone. Good evening. My name is Frank Jackalone. I live at 1863 Lakewood Drive South in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, and I'm here representing the Sierra Club today. I'm here to join the people who just spoke, saying that light rail is an essential element for any redesign of the Howard Carrington Bridge. Just to add, to solely add lanes and to improve the capacity to carry cars in that bridge, will not fix the problem. Because as soon as those cars get over into Tampa and hit the, the extension of 275 going to downtown Tampa, they're going to reach the bottom. Uh, and those of us who have experienced that know that. The only solution to our transit problems here in this area is to bring light rail, as Pinellas County is moving forward to. So we asked Florida DOT to make it a priority. Um, I had the great opportunity to go to the Rays game last night, Tampa Bay Rays. I'm sure we have a real fan of the Rays. <laughs> no matter where the new stadium is built, whether it be St. Petersburg or in Tampa, we need right light rail to connect to those sports venues, to recreation venues. Uh, otherwise, people won't go from one side of the bay to the other on the bit, a regular basis that's needed to make this a vibrant community to support teams like the Rays. So please invest money now into bringing light rail to the area across our Franklin Bridge. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Alex Glenn. Thank you. 
comment I would make is, when is the point of no return? What is that date in which the design, the engineering is done such that we, the public, will know when uh, light rail for bus rapid transit is off the table for this design? Thank you for your comment. You will see us after the formal portion. All right, our next speaker is uh, Katie Franco. very focused on the future of our economic prosperity for Tampa Bay. And part of that future we envision is transportation and transit options throughout the region. We're very excited about the progress that DOT has made on the bridge. We're excited about what we're going to do to make sure we have the right infrastructure. Um, but we really do urge that we do take the time um, to track with what both the counties are playing on either side. And we're working diligently with both Hillsborough and Canales County to support their efforts to bring rail programs forward. And we hope to see that there is a transit envelope in here. We hope that you take the time that we need to make sure that we don't build something and have to build something else later on. So again, thank you so much. And we look forward to the DOT to find those solutions. Thank you for your comment. Our next speaker is Kevin Thurman. Thank you very much. Kevin Thurman, Connect Tampa Bay. I'm the executive director of an organization that represents over 3,300 uh, grassroots advocates who are concerned about creating more transportation options in the current region. And this specific corridor and this specific bridge is vital to doing that. Um, the number of transportation options is almost limited whether or not this bridge is built or not because the I-275 corridor actually carries more people, 20% more traffic, than the I-4 corridor that's getting the uh, $2.1 billion dollar that's ultimate I-4 upgrade, which also also has the $1.2 billion Sunrun upgrade, uh, as paid for mostly by the state. And so what I would say is that we need to not only look at whether or not we're going to build this bridge and keep all of our options open, but we also need to make sure that as we ask for money and as we push forward, that we make sure that we do things that make it so that we are getting the kind of multimodal corridor in this, this corridor that we have that includes the Howard Franklin Bridge. And this new bridge that needs to be built should be able to support any kind of expansion that need be on the most cost-efficient manner. Thank you. Our next speaker is Phil Compton. Good evening, Phil Compton. I reside at Open 30 Park Circle, Tampa, Florida 33604. And my office at the Sierra Club is at 1990 Central Avenue, St. Petersburg, 33712. I'm one of those people that crosses the bay every day. Uh, I'm also one of the people like Mr. Jacqueline who uh, enjoys the race game. I want to thank you for holding this hearing early enough so that people can go and not see the race tonight. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I uh, left my home at 4.30 in the afternoon. It took me 90 minutes to get to downtown St. Petersburg to go to the game. That's the first inning. This is typical of what we have here. I want to uh, reiterate what uh, Ms. McMullen said earlier, that there is a specific plan here in Pinellas County. If it should pass in a little over a year from now, there will be specific time frames moving forward in which a multimodal system will be developed, funded, engineered, and built in this county. We would hope very much that the plan that you have, particularly in, uh, as shown in Figure 4 in the handout, would go forward in a manner that is consistent with that so that our state and federal funds are used in a way that complements the local investment that we have from Pinellas County and people like myself who come over here and spend our money uh, to connect the bay as is planned. Hillsborough County is moving forward as well and could very well have that same sort of commitment as well coming forward. So please let's have these specific time frames done in a consistent manner we don't want to wait another 20, 30, 40 years to be able to get across the bay in some other way than driving our car in the worst traffic congestion that exists in the United States of America. It's time to do better. It's time for DOT to commit to spending resources from our tax dollars here in this region to serve the people and the needs that we have in this area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jeff Hill. 
Thank you. Our next speaker is Edward Ringwald. Ringwald, that's me. Thank you and good evening. My name is Edward Ringwald. I reside at 119 Hurt 14th Terrace Northeast in St. Pete, and my mailing address is PO Box 21846 in Tampa, Station 622. Um, the Florida DOT has an opportunity right now with the proposed replacement of the northbound span of the Howard Franklin Bridge to consider a transit envelope, which would mean light rail or commuter rail. And our region needs light rail, needs light rail or commuter rail as an option. We are one of the metro areas in the United States, or even in the state of Florida. Miami, Miami Fort Lauderdale has Tri-Rail, or the Andrews Gang Sun-Rail, and the Camp Bay area has very limited options, which means major companies cannot relocate here due to the fact that there are very limited transit options. So, I think but there's an opportunity for the Florida DOT right now with the proposed replacement of the northbound span the Howard Franklin Bridge to go ahead and consider a transit envelope, so to speak, like a light rail or commuter rail service. We just don't need um, Interstate 275 flying to just 20 lanes and still have gridlock. But light rail or commuter rail there is an opportunity, and the opportunity is now. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Savannah Toluca. Hello, my name is Savannah Toluca. I live at 334 4th Street South from City Church Fire. I'm here because I would like to urge you to consider light rail and future for the Hudson Bridge. I think it's really important, and I'm not alone when I say that if I could opt not to drive a vehicle and just take light rail, then I would. And I know that if we have that option excuse me, coming up in St. Petersburg, and we're really looking forward to it. I think that considering that air pollution is one of the biggest um, carbon emissions is the biggest air pollution problem in Pinellas County, that it would be amazing if we didn't have to have so many cars, we didn't have to deal with parking, car insurance, and automobile payments, and we could just hop on our rail, get to where we need to go. And, um, enjoy the city Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Travis Norton. So I try to figure out why 
people that want it. So I did some research. And I'd like to submit this. It's from the U.S. Bureau of Statistics. In the last, in the last census in 2010, how many people in Pinellas County said they used public transportation? 1.6% of the people. That's on that. 1.6. Now we're going to spend billions of dollars on 1.6% of the people. That doesn't sound like a common sense uh, solution to me. <coughs> uh, we just got hit with flood insurance rates are going up. Obamacare is coming. Our college kids are coming home with hundred thousand dollars in debt. The Board of County Commission just passed a new stormwater thing. All of us are going to have to pay for houses. The national debt seventeen trillion. The state of Florida is one hundred fifty-two billion. So I would say this bridge needs to be built as cheaply as possible. A good bridge, but as cheap as possible. And I would like to address the, the myth of the uh, environmental conditions in Pinellas. Pinellas Park in all of Pinellas County is within the state implementation program standards of all the EPA regulations. There is no air pollution problem here. In addition, as cars get better, their emissions get fewer, and the air pollution gets less every year. Thank you for your Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jennifer Winter. Hello, my name is Jennifer Winter, and I reside at 930 59th Avenue, Sneaky Beach, Florida 3376. Um, I'd like to say that I'm a recent graduate of the University of Florida, and I just signed on to be the sustainability coordinator for the University of South Florida on the campus. I'd like to um, say that at the University of Florida, we had better transit options that we do here. We have a um, campus here in Tampa and also a campus here in Tennessee. It's very hard to do to get across the bridge, and most people do not have the time or the gas to spend, you know, a commute back and forth every day. So I think that we really need to look at light rail options or alternative options. I was definitely not um, asked, I was not one of the 1.6 people. There's definitely more people that would use light rail or other options. Um, so please consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jeff Danner. Thank you, my name is Jeff Danner. I reside at 2351 Garment Avenue in St. Petersburg, Florida. I think most of the people in this room know the efforts that have been going underway with PSDA. Uh, the MPO, the Pinellas Planning Council. Um, what they probably don't know, it was a joint meeting of the Pinellas and Hillsborough MPO um, several years ago that asked DOT to move this study up forward a few years and put it in the work program so it coincides with the alternative analysis study that was being conducted so we could look at this exact thing. Um, the Tumarta Master Plan, which encompasses the seven county, identifies the main spine of the region crossing right over the Howard Franklin Bridge. It basically goes from USF Tampa, USF St. Petersburg, which goes to most of our employment centers, our residential centers, and um, all the activity centers in our county. Recently, we traveled with T-BARDA to Washington, D.C. to speak with all the federal delegates, and as we listed all of the T-BARDA priorities from Spring Hill to Manatee, every one of them stopped and wanted more information on the Howard Franklin Bridge. Understanding that the two largest employment centers in the state are now separated by this bridge, and if given the opportunity to be connected by this bridge, give job opportunities and to build the largest employment center south of Atlanta. It can't be a parking lot. It can't be a simple replacement of the existing bridge. We have to make sure that regardless of what comes out of this, we don't preclude any options for a transit connection in the future. The Green Lake Council will meet and make its final recommendations on November 6th and present it to the county commission. And it is very important that this bridge is a key to not only Pinellas County, but Hillsborough and the whole Tibarra region as it relates to, again, like I said, our jobs and the future of our region. Um, we want to make sure that you do consider certainly the phase four, and as it even says in your brochure, it's at a crossroads. And that is exactly where we are in this region, and it's time to, to step up and make sure we don't go to make any options. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dan Hardy.
Good afternoon, Dan Harvey, uh, 1425 Central Avenue, St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, I'm on the board of directors of the Edge District in downtown St. Pete. I'm here to speak tonight on the Howard Franklin Bridge replacement. Well, I wish there was room for seven or eight lanes in between these two bridges right now. After reviewing the plans, it looks like we just have room to make kind of a like kind replacement. And that like kind replacement is not going to allow for um, rail or rapid bus transit or extra lanes. So if we're going to have to add on to what is being proposed. That add on, um, after you tear down the old bridge, the cost of that we have to try to figure out what it's going to be, how it's going to connect Hillsboro to Pinellas, where it's going to go to when it gets to Pinellas, or where it's going to go when it goes through Hillsboro. That overview of that whole thing, like the one, your young lady from Tampa who says she's trying to look at it from an overall picture, I would like to see it from an overall picture. You know, what it looks like down the road, when it's going to happen, uh, and how much it's going to cost. Obviously, the key part of the, of, of the spine is the Howard Franklin bridge replacement. And again, you're just replacing it at what it was. So, uh, my question would be, and I would like to and you delve into this further, I guess the answer is, is, is what does the overall picture look like and what overall is it going to cost us? Because it's not easy to go across that body of water. And you have to decide, you know, what are the ramifications? Thank you. If you will see us after this session, we will find you some more information. All right. Uh, our next speaker is Barbara Hazelden. Yes, my name is Barbara Hazelden, and I live at 1043 31st Terrace Northeast in St. Petersburg, Florida. <coughs> and, um, I have been very much opposed to this project um, based on many facts and not just feelings. Uh, facts of other communities that have gone down this road and found out that the um, all the figuring in the world by uh, men uh, and women uh, can can be completely uh, off off base, and that within just like Charlotte. Uh, uh, you know, they started out in, uh, I believe it was 1996, and, and just a few years later, they're already in huge financial problems with light rail. Uh, they, they're in need of $5 billion more to go on. Uh, some of the uh, as officials in the Charlotte area who have been involved in, in, the, in the light rail since inception are, are basically pulling their hair out as to how they're going to continue to find other revenue sources, which of course are the people who are sitting in this room. Uh, it's the taxpayers that are going to be bailing out these, these projects. And it's, it's a, a scenario in California uh, and, and many different states that plays out time and time again. Uh, one of the speakers was talking about the number or percentage of people who actually rely on public transportation and at the same time we have someone talking about how much money would you go to the baseball game. It's going to take a heck of a lot more than going to a baseball game to make this project work. It's going to take people who put their keys down or perhaps sell their car and decide they're going to take up a lifestyle of depending on light rail and buses. And we live in a time, time today where one phone call from yourself will change your entire day. And you're stuck on a bus across the bay instead of having your own car and your own set of keys. And I think that's just not our lifestyle. So when we consider that about 2% of people in Pinellas County depend on public transportation, uh, then this means that, that there's going to be a lot more than 2% that are being necessary, and I believe they refer to it in the vernacular here as choice riders, people who are going to make a choice to put their car and their lifestyle and their cell phone aside, and they're going to rely on public transportation to make it worthwhile. Uh, I think it makes you know far more sense. First of all, I'd like to just say that this, the, what happened in Hillsboro with the referendum, I forecast is going to happen here also. So I hope you don't uh, make a commitment on a bridge that a year from now 
that there's not going to be that um, flat rail system for the next town. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's the last card that I have. But is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Yes. My name is Judge Fortin. I'm in uh, Clearwater, East End of Clearwater. I uh, definitely think that you should consider a light rail or any other kind of uh, public transportation because um, I do have a car and I drive and I've been rear-ended four times because people from Pasco drive to Clearwater on their way to, to uh, Tampa. And I think if you take them off the road, then uh, I will be in, you know, uh, traffic, stuck in traffic and rear-ended by people text message while they drive. So definitely, this is the only place on the planet that doesn't have any uh, transport, mass transportation. And people are only using it I mean, because there is not available, uh, transportation available, that's why there's only 1% of people using it. Uh, for a um, uh, Republican uh, convention, my friend was going to uh, international war to pick up her, um, she was going to, she went to pick up her uniform, and it would take her three hours to get from Clearwater to international law. So I gave her a ride and, and brought her back. because. We don't have that much in public transportation now. That's why we're trying to get public transportation. And that's why we should think about public transportation when we're building these bridges. If we had a light rail or, or uh, any kind of rail, we wouldn't have to expand this bridge. We would be saving money by you know, putting people on, on the transportation that don't want to drive. I'm going to give you my car keys if I can go on a bus or on a light rail. So please, do not. Avoid Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hey, I noticed that we had some elected officials or their representatives to come in. Uh, if there's anyone that uh, would like to introduce themselves for the record, elected officials or their representatives. Commissioner Karen Seal from the Pinellas County Commission and also chairman of the Pinellas County Metropolitan Planning Organization. Thank you all for being here tonight and sharing your thoughts. Seeing no one else uh, would ready to speak. Uh, the, the verbatim transcript of both sessions of the hearing's formal proceedings will be available for inspection at the District 7 office for public review upon request within three weeks. Thank you for attending this session and for, for providing your input into this project. It's approximately 6.37. I hereby officially suspend the formal session of the public hearing for the Howard Franklin North, Northbound Bridge Replacement pd &E study. This hearing will be continued at the second session on Thursday, October the 10th, 2013 from 5 to 7 p.m. in Tampa, Florida. The department representatives will be available to answer questions, and the material shown uh, this evening will be on display. You may continue to view the materials on display and speak with our project staff. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending. Good night, and drive home safely.